Hi, in today's video, I wanna talk about how people can get into the title of senior software engineer and still fall on their face and fail at that job. Now, what's interesting about this is I've been a professional software engineer for over 15 years now, and I have violated all these rules myself. And so I can speak to them very personally about how you can run into these problems, but also how you can overcome them. It's not helpful if you make the same mistake twice. So I want people to learn from my mistakes and how they can perform well as a senior software engineer in this industry. So I'm gonna go over four different ways that senior engineers can fail at their job. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with the first one. The first one is when people first come onto a team or onto a new company and they advise without rapport. If you've gotten to the stage of a senior software engineer, you do know stuff, you know things. But the problem is that there's, it's a very opinionated field and no team and no software, no architecture is perfect. So if a senior software engineer comes into a new job or a new team and then starts advising or criticizing the existing system without actually building up any rapport with the team, or like any reputation of how they know what they're talking about, that's going to be received as criticism and it's not going to look well upon you. And how to overcome this is basically spend some time with the team, take away all judgment for a while, learn how the team works, learn what the software is doing and what it's not doing, and also what the business and what the users are trying to get out of that team. Now, when you have that whole picture in mind and you know how everything is moving, then you can understand how and why things are built the way they are today. And then hopefully you build up some rapport and some reputation to be able to advise softly into the right direction. Everything can be improved, but the only way you're gonna do the most benefit is when you already have that rapport and that reputation to build in to guide the software in the right way. You can't do that alone. The second way that software engineers, that senior software engineers can fail, but also just any level of software engineer can fail this, is talking without action. Now, it's super easy to criticize something or say that you can solve something by saying, I can do this uh, with X, Y, and Z, and I can even do that on the weekend. Um, that's not helpful, dude. Like, you have to be able to, like, not only follow through on what you say, you're then setting yourself up for, like, a solution that you don't even know exactly how to solve yet. Because no matter what project it is, there's always a surprise and you will always be delayed and you're putting yourself in a bad position right away. The idea is you don't wanna talk without action. You wanna take action on an assumption. If you have a hypothesis of like, I can improve this by, by doing X, Y, Z, then go ahead and try it out. Just go ahead, and, you don't need permission to try to improve something. Try to build it out, prove it out, find the path forward, and then talk about how you can improve. Because when you talk and you advise and say like, I, I know I can do this because look, I've already tried and this is what I found and it can be done. You have so much more impact that way because then you can already have something that's halfway done and you can follow through and provide real value for the team versus just talking about things all the time. Always take action, always start and see what you can find out and then talk about solutions. And number three about how senior software engineers can actually fail at their jobs or get bad reviews is laser focus. Now people think that laser focusing is a great thing. Like they can get so much done, but you can also laser focus on the wrong things. Now, as a senior software engineer, you probably have an opinion about how architecture is built, what kind of syntax you want to use, what kind of linters and test frameworks that would be the best for the organization. Those can be good things but they're only good things if you have buy-in from your manager and your team and the business partners that it's an important thing to progress forward. If you laser focus and try to solve these problems and you're the only one on the team that actually cares about that, then you're gonna be isolated and seeing that you're spinning your wheels on stuff that is not moving the company and the team forward. So you don't wanna be a lone wolf that is trying to improve stuff that you're the only one that cares about. Now, I agree that sometimes these things should be taken care of, but you need buy-in. You can't be doing this by yourself. As a team, as a company, you guys got to work together and agree that the things you're doing are moving the company and the team forward. Don't focus on the wrong things. Make sure everyone's on board. And the last way, number four, is how senior software engineers can fail is that it's the old communication skill set. Now, when you reach the level of senior software engineer, you have you can have so many great ideas and how you can you know, twist the technology to do exactly what you want 
and how to make these new things and make things go smoother and faster. But if you can't tell a non-engineer like how that's going to help you in the business, then it's not going to work out. You're not going to get the buy-in to follow through on that project. Again, it goes back to like having buy-in and that people back you that this is a good project to work on. If you can take your sweet idea of how to remove the load times from 30 seconds down to like three seconds for a very long and intensive query, then you have to be able to put that in layman's terms and tell the business, tell the team how you can improve by these metrics. And once they have buy-in for that, then you can implement your great idea. If you can't communicate how your idea is so great, then you won't be able to actually do the great thing. Having communication is an OP skill set, and it takes time to be able to walk through that. And a lot of it is just communicating with people that don't normally speak the languages and the terms that you do, and be able to translate and show how things are good or bad, or just explain things a lot more clearly. The hardest part about communication is the first step. And the first step is always knowing your audience. To know your audience of like, how technical are they? Do they code? Or maybe they have in the past, maybe they code a little bit. Are they a designer? Having that kind of information, you can speak in their terms versus going deep in the rabbit hole of technical terms and have their eyes glaze over and you're not getting anywhere. So knowing your audience will help you communicate better so that you know how to translate these ideas that you have and put them forth in a very clear, winnable situation. And that way you can move forward and have the buy-in to finish these cool things that you want to do. So these are the four things that I have learned and I have seen other people fail at. In fact, I've failed at all of these probably more than once. As I get older, I realize how important these things are to be able to avoid and be able to jump into a new team, a new company, and be effective right away. I hope this helps when people are like jumping into a new team or getting a new promotion. This will help you smooth out your growth in your career and make things go a lot better and honestly a lot faster if you can learn these skills. If this is the kind of content that you're really interested in, let me know down in the comments. And also there's another video here that I think you'll like. If you made it this far in the video, go ahead and put a cookie emoji in the comments so I know that you've made it all the way to the end and I can thank you personally. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.